NASA recently declared that now is the right time to turn our attention to Venus. This announcement follows renewed interest in the planet, fueled by evidence suggesting possible signs of life in its atmosphere. But if you look back a few decades, this wasn't always the case. In the 1960s, NASA frequently referred to Venus as a planet of hell. It was inhospitable, unpredictable, and wrapped in a choking atmosphere. Meanwhile, the United States began focusing its sights on Mars. But this shift in priority wasn't random. During the height of the Cold War space race, the Soviet Union had already staked its claim on Venus, pouring enormous resources into missions to our sister planet. Despite the planet's infernal conditions, the USSR kept sending spacecraft to Venus for more than two decades. And thanks to public figures like Neil deGrasse Tyson, many today are rediscovering what those early missions truly revealed. Today, we take a closer look at declassified images and mission records from those bold Soviet expeditions, and uncover what might have driven one of history's most secretive space programs. When the Soviet Union collapsed in the early 1990s, the world didn't just witness the fall of a superpower. We also lost access to countless records, secrets, and insights, many buried behind layers of classified data and military control. For years, the Soviets had cultivated a culture of deep secrecy, whether in espionage, scientific discovery, or space exploration. Before NASA dominated planetary missions, the Soviet Union was arguably ahead. It had a string of firsts to its name the first artificial satellite, the first human in space, and perhaps most intriguingly, the first probes to successfully reach another planet, Venus. Their Venus exploration campaign was known as the Venera program, named after the Russian word for Venus, Venera. It began in 1961 and continued until the early 1980s. While the U.S. focused on reaching the moon, the Soviets directed their efforts toward the second planet from the sun. Why Venus? Why commit to a planet so unforgiving? There are several theories. Perhaps it was a strategic decision. Venus is, on average, much closer to Earth than Mars, making it more cost-effective to reach with limited rocket power. Or maybe the Soviets suspected Venus might hold secrets about its climate, geology, or even traces of life. Whatever the motive, the Soviets sent 28 missions to Venus. Of those, 13 made it into the atmosphere, and eight landed on the surface, an incredible achievement considering the technology of the time. NASA, on the other hand, was struggling. The U.S. Space Agency attempted several Venus missions in the 1960s, but most failed. This so-called Venus curse only increased Soviet confidence. As NASA turned to the moon, the Soviets doubled down on Venus. And they made history. The Soviet Venera probes were the first to enter another planet's atmosphere. The first to land softly. The first to capture images, and even sounds, from an alien world. Yet, despite these accomplishments, these missions are rarely discussed today. Why? Much of the answer lies in the closed nature of the Soviet regime. Information was tightly controlled. Public releases were limited. And when the USSR fell, so did its space agency, many records were lost, destroyed, or scattered. Still, some data survived. And what we now know is extraordinary. The surface of Venus, as revealed by Soviet landers, is unimaginably hostile. Temperatures hot enough to melt lead. Atmospheric pressure nearly 100 times that of Earth. Toxic clouds filled with sulfuric acid. And yet, Soviet probes endured long enough to send back valuable data, sometimes for several minutes, sometimes for hours. Venus, it turns out, was no paradise. But it was scientifically rich. In the early phases, the Soviets experimented heavily. Probes like Venera 3 and Venera 4 helped map the planet's atmosphere and temperature. But it wasn't until the 1970s that the missions became more advanced. Venera 7 was the first to transmit data from the surface of another planet, marking a major milestone in human spaceflight. Later missions, like Venera 13, brought back full-color panoramic images and chemical analysis of Venus's surface rocks. These were not primitive robots. 
They were cutting-edge science labs designed to withstand extreme conditions. Some probes were even equipped with microphones, attempting to record audio from the Venusian surface, a feat unmatched by any other space age. So why don't we remember these missions? Part of the answer lies in secrecy. The Soviet Union was known for its tight control over information, especially during the Cold War. Failed launches, partial successes, and internal setbacks were often hidden from the public eye, unlike the highly publicized and globally broadcasted American Apollo missions. Even the successes of the Venera program were announced with minimal fanfare, often buried in dry press releases or academic reports. This lack of global storytelling meant that many of these groundbreaking missions faded into obscurity outside the Soviet sphere. But another reason is timing and context. The 1960s and 70s were defined by the race to the moon. Public attention was focused on that single celestial goal. Venus missions, despite being just as technically impressive, simply didn't fit the narrative of a space race, won, by landing a man on the moon. As a result, these robotic achievements were overshadowed, even though they were the first of their kind in planetary exploration. Yet the impact of the Venera program cannot be overstated. It laid the technological and scientific foundation for nearly everything we do in planetary science today. The Venera landers were the first to survive atmospheric entry on another planet, the first to capture images from the surface of another world, and the first to conduct chemical analyses of extraterrestrial soil. These missions demonstrated the feasibility of remote robotic exploration in hostile environments and pushed engineering to its limits creating pressure vessels, thermal shielding, and instruments that could survive the crushing heat and pressure of Venus. Much of the technology pioneered in Venera, such as descent modules, thermal insulation, and atmospheric spectrometers, would go on to influence later NASA projects, including missions to Mars, Saturn's moons, and even deep space probes like Voyager and Cassini. The methods used to model atmospheric dynamics, surface composition, and radio communication in harsh environments were refined and expanded by following generations of scientists, all building on the Soviet blueprints from Venus. Today, Venus is once again under the scientific spotlight. While its surface remains a furnace, hot enough to melt lead, recent findings have reopened the question of whether life could exist in its upper atmosphere. In 2020, scientists announced the potential detection of phosphine gas in Venus's clouds, a molecule that, on Earth, is often associated with biological activity. Although controversial and still debated, this discovery reignited global interest in Earth's closest planetary neighbor. NASA has since announced two upcoming missions, Da Vinci Plus and Veritas, both set to launch in the late 2020s. These missions aim to study Venus's atmosphere and geological history in unprecedented detail. Meanwhile, Russia is reviving its legacy with a proposed mission tentatively known as Venera D, a collaborative project that may include an orbiter, a lander, and a high-altitude balloon designed to float in Venus's temperate cloud layers. If successful, Venera D would mark Russia's return to planetary exploration and a symbolic continuation of the very program that started it all. There's also international interest. The European Space Agency is developing the Envision Orbiter, and even private space companies have expressed interest in designing atmospheric probes or robotic flyers. Final thoughts. The legacy of the Soviet Venus missions transcends national boundaries and political ideologies. These were missions driven by raw scientific curiosity and daring engineering. Missions that ventured into conditions no machine had survived before, and that accomplished what many thought impossible. They remind us that space exploration is not just about flags and glory, it's about understanding. Understanding how planets form, how climates evolve, and perhaps even how life begins. Venus, though long overlooked, is now seen as a key to unlocking the climate history of rocky planets, including our own Earth. As we enter a new era of exploration, with reusable rockets, AI-driven instruments, and international cooperation, it's only fitting that we revisit the planet where it all began. Venus may be hellish, but it is also a frontier. One that still holds secrets, and one that still challenges us to go further. In the extreme heat and pressure of Venus, humanity proved something extraordinary decades ago, 
that even the most inhospitable worlds can be reached, studied, and understood. Perhaps the next great discovery won't come from comfort zones, but from pushing boundaries, just as the Venera program once did. Venus, once dismissed as a dead world, may yet become the birthplace.